I think that religion should be criticized on intellectual grounds as providing a competitor to the scientific explanation of life and the universe. It's educationally pernicious because it gives the idea that you can uh, evade the responsibility to understand things by postulating some sort of easy explanation, oh, God did it. I think that's educationally pernicious. And as a scientist and, and as an educator, I'm most interested in that. However, there are other problems with religion as well. The idea of the idea of faith, the idea of believing something without any e evidence, the idea of believing something without any evidence tends to make people prepared to do terrible things in the name of their God because they believe that their God wants them to be a martyr. And they'll go straight to paradise if they do. There's only a minority of them who do that, only an extreme minority. But if the majority of children are brought up to believe that there's some virtue in faith, that there's some virtue in believing something without any evidence, then it will only take a minority to take that really seriously. In a sense, the suicide bombers are the ones who really, really take their religion seriously. And the gentle ones who don't, who don't do suicide bombing, they're the ones who don't really take it seriously. But as Sam Harris has said, these people really believe what they say they believe and they believe it without evidence. And if you believe something without evidence, and if you're taught that it's a virtue to believe something without evidence, then there's no argument that can sway you. Because I can't come along and say, look, I think you're wrong about this because mm. they say, no, 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 stuff fingers in ears. I've been taught this is faith. You can't touch my faith. Mm. Do you think there could be one sentence that could convince, um, let's say a creationist to seriously doubt their theory? Ideally, if you could convince a believer in God to really doubt their belief, but that's too hard. Not sure about a, about a sentence. I think perhaps the single most convincing fact, the observation that you could point to would be the, um, the pattern of resemblances that you see when you compare the genes using modern DNA techniques, actually looking at the, the letter to letter correspondences between genes, compare the genes of any pair of animals you like, a uh, pair of animals, pair of plants, and then plot out the resemblances and they fall on a perfect hierarchy, a perfect family tree. And the only alternative to it being a family tree is that the intelligent designer deliberately set out to deceive us in the most underhand and devious manner. Um, <laughs> more, moreover, the same thing works with, with every gene you do separately, and even pseudogenes that don't do anything but are vestigial relics of genes that once, that once did something. I find it extremely hard to imagine how any creationist who actually bothered to listen to that could possibly doubt the fact of evolution. But they don't listen. I mean, there's, there's, your, your question is a, is a perfectly good question, but it's not, it's not really relevant because what they do is simply stick their fingers in their ear and say, la, la, la. They know what's true because it's in the holy book. And that, that even, I mean, the most extreme case is the geologist Kurt Wise, who has a PhD in geology from Harvard, and said, if all the evidence in the universe pointed towards an old Earth, I would be the first to admit it, but I would still be a young Earth creationist because that is what Holy Scripture teaches me. You cannot argue with, 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 a, with, a, with a mind like that. A mind like that, it seems to me, is, well, a disgrace to the human species. My attitude to science is that we are fundamentally trying to understand how things work. Science is very difficult. It's very difficult to understand how things work. The hard problem of consciousness has been mentioned, the problem of the origin of the universe, the problem of the origin of life, the problem of how life has this uncanny appearance of, of being designed, the size of the universe, the scale of the universe, uh, how embryology works. These are all deeply difficult questions. They require hard scientific work. And in all cases, I think I'm right in saying that scientific work consists of explaining complicated things in terms of the interactions 
of their parts or of simpler things. So we always try to explain complex things in terms of simpler things. We do not resort to magical language. We do not snow our audience with highfalutin sounding words that don't actually mean anything. We use words that actually have meaning. We use uh, expressions that can be tested. We work hard at understanding the universe in terms of its component parts. We don't invent superarching entities which have no explanation in themselves. We don't invoke ideas like the universe has consciousness, the universe has awareness, atoms have awareness. If we have a difficult problem like awareness, we explain it in terms of the interactions between small parts working together in ways that scientists understand. When we're in school, um, we learn how to critically argue. So for example, if we're told, uh, read this book and give your opinion, we have to support that with evidence. Now, most people, be them atheists or theists, will take that skill with them later into life. But how is it that, in your opinion, when it comes to their personal beliefs with regard to religion, they're able to put this down and just accept it on face value? It is remarkable, isn't it, that the sort of people who, in their everyday life, when they're planning a holiday, planning a journey, planning to go grocery shopping or how to mend their car or anything. Use perfectly good logical reasoning, skeptical reasoning. You know, what might have gone wrong with the car? You, you eliminate things, you do, you, you, you do, you use a sort of scientific method and you use logic and reason and sense. And then when it comes to religion, it all goes right out of the window. And these very same individuals who show no deficiency in any other field of life, their entire mental, I mean, Christopher Hitchens says religion poisons everything. It does, and it certainly poisons the ability to use your brain. If you have some kind of fundamental belief in something, some ideal, some political ideal, it might be Marxism, it might be National Socialism, it might be patriotism, it might be the honor of the emperor. There, there are other things than religion, but religion is a remarkably powerful one because religion actually teaches that you don't have to justify your beliefs. They're just faith. They're just justified by themselves. And uh, so I think if you're asking me, would the world be a better place without religion? I would unequivocally say yes. If you're asking me, would there be no fanatical fundamentalisms without religion? The answer is no, there would be, because we do have fundamental patriotism, fundamental uh, Marxism, etc. I would just add to that that um, these the science of any uh, one century is going to be superseded by the science of future centuries, such that if somebody from, say, the Middle Ages were to come, were to be brought back by a time machine to, to now, they would find mobile phones and, and uh, computers and, and uh, jet airplanes. They would be indistinguishable from magic. They would appear to be supernatural. So I am a materialist. I don't believe there is anything supernatural. But don't think of that as a denigration of the natural, because if you were to come back in 500 years' time, you wouldn't have seen nothing yet. The, the physics, the engineering, the biology of 500 years' time will be so far advanced over today's that we might well fall on our knees and worship it as supernatural, but it wouldn't be. It would be the evolved uh, natural. I have experienced plenty of things which could be called transcendental. I've experienced the feeling of almost mystical wonder that I get when I look up at the stars, look up at the Milky Way, uh, contemplate the galaxies receding from us, listen to a Schubert quintet, uh, read a sonnet of Shakespeare. These are all things which only a human mind is capable of doing. So may I ask you? Only a human mind is capable of doing that. The human mind is capable of doing those things because the human mind has been put together in the brain as a highly complicated organization that has evolved over some four billion years of evolution, putting together nervous systems. It is a stunning achievement of evolution to have put together the human brain, the human brain that is capable 
of being moved by such things. I yield to no one in my capacity to be moved by what you call the, the transcendental. What I do not do, however, is to indulge in mystical nonsense about it being there before there were brains or the equivalent of brains. You've done debates all around the world. Have you ever had a, I guess, a clever or a interesting argument from the other side? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. 